Hello, everyone, and welcome back to your favorite podcast, Spilling the Tea Leaves. My name is Michelle. You can find me online at rememberlovehealing.com, and you can also find me on Instagram at rememberlove. And now I'm making absurd videos on TikTok, and that is Remember Love Healing. How are you? Where have you been? You've disappeared on me. Well, I've disappeared. I'm very, very sorry. Um, lots of stuff has been happening in the background. I have been preparing for more online courses. There is a course coming up. So if you are interested in learning about Crystal Reiki, please feel free to visit my website, Remember Love Healing. All the information is there. You can sign up. You'll have a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, well, a class with a group of students and me live. We'll be talking, asking questions, learning, absorbing, and you'll have ongoing mentorship. It's actually kind of one of my favorite things to do right now. Um, I already have a group of students. I love them. They're amazing. I'm trying to get up a directory for them on my website. It's just taking some time. But yeah, if you want to join in and become part of the Remember Love family, please feel free to visit. Now, I went to the States, I picked up my dog, super, well, dogs, super excited. And now we're back, we're back. My daughter's sick, there's a full moon and an eclipse somewhere and everything is crazy. And while I'm on that subject, if you've heard people say, don't charge your crystals under this moon, don't do your moon water, it's hectic, it's crazy, calm down, it's okay. It's actually not hectic or crazy. That is the fear that we're putting into this idea of full moon energy, right? Some people do really, really well with this energy. Some people don't necessarily resonate with it um full moons are powerful this just happens to be a little more powerful than usual really just check in on yourself see how you're feeling you can still charge your crystals you can still do your full moon water nothing is going to happen there's no evil or fear attached to it it's only the evil or fear that you attach to this tool right so charge your water, do what you want. I promise you it's going to be fine. Don't buy into the uh, regurgitated information that we keep seeing online. All right. So today's episode is Florida water. Now, Florida water has been a highly debated topic right now in the spiritual new age community, healing community, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to refer to it as. And there has been a lot of voices that are claiming it as part of a closed practice and that others are not allowed to use it. So I actually went in and did research on this for everybody. So this information is good. So you don't have to do the research and you can actually have a normal conversation, I hope, with somebody. So let's talk about it. So the history of Florida water, and you're probably going to be disappointed. While there has been a big wave of cultural appropriation shrieks and yells about Florida water, the information that I found actually is a little surprising. Now, as a Florida born and raised in Miami native, I guess is how you can say it. When I was younger, this stuff was everywhere. It was everywhere. Like I would see it at Sedano's. I would see it at Publix, which are the grocery stores that were there. Back in the day, remember Eckerd's or Woolworth? Those things, these, I mean, this is how old I am, I guess. But it was there. And to be honest, I was surprised when it was being so heavily connected to things like spell work or ritual work. This stuff used to be for sale right next to the Agua de Julieta and Gen Nate, which are all eau de colognes. They're colognes. Um, quickly, as a side note, when I was little, my mom used to use Gen Nate on me and my brother after each bath. It was like this giant 
yellow well the bottle was clear with his black letters and the liquid was like yellow and we weren't considered clean until we were doused in this stuff right so as i was researching this topic some major core <laughs> memories became unlocked for me so anyway so fast forward to today and there's this rise of people saying it's cultural appropriation for others to use this product especially outside of closed practices like santeria voodoo 21 divisions and the like and it's not allowed to be used outside of these practices and violations will be heavily punished by their ancestors and their deities so like i said me enjoying to bring you all the right answers and learning how to fight bs with the truth decided to just deep dive into this stuff and see why what why right? Now, I'm not saying that this particular tool shouldn't be a part of virtual work to each their own, but knowing how this product started and why it's marketed is important. Knowing the history is really important. So for those of you that don't know, what is Florida water? Florida water, now I'm talking about the commercial Florida water. This is the one that is in a almost like a bullet shaped bottle with this very floral um, label. I'm talking floral label, you can't miss it. That label is actually designed by a French uh, designer, but we'll get to that in a moment. And it's sold as a cologne. So if you go into, I, I can't speak, speak for the rest of the US, but if you walk into any pharmacy or grocery store in florida in miami you are going to find this stuff i'm sure you can find it in other locations across the country i'm just speaking for florida because that's where i grew up that's where i saw it all the time i'm sure in new york and new jersey as well even in texas i believe but i'm not sure if you walk into a walgreens in oklahoma you'll find this stuff i don't know i don't know i don't know how it's marketed currently so these, this commercial Florida water, as we know it, is trademarked and sold by Robert J. Murray and David T. Landman from New Jersey, and it was trademarked in 1880. The scent is a flowery and citrusy scent like sweet orange. And just as a note, this was not the only Florida water that was sold. In the 19th century, there was a variety of manufacturers that created Florida water in the market. This is the one that survived. This was the only one that was managed and marketed in a way that survived literally hundreds of years, if you think about it. Now, Florida water, commercial Florida water, and be very specific, commercial Florida water, because it is a commercial product, was introduced in 1808 and was a staple in American drugstores and perfume shop. It was a generic product that later became trademarked by Murray and Landman in that bottle that we recognize so much. And this was a bottle that took over the market. Now, when Florida water initially started, it was marketed for its curative properties, included, but not limited to, an aftershave it was to be sprayed in the air to prevent infection it was marketed as being really good for the skin for tired feet for makeup remover muscle relaxer to fight dandruff for laundry for headaches for tummy aches heartbreak you name it it was almost like a cure-all catch-all now you have to think back in the 19th century this was a time when there was a lot of salesmen claiming magic oil or magic water or whatever a lot of people refer to it as snake oil this was a thing this was actually a thing now i'm not saying that florida water might not, might not have worked i don't know what the ingredients were if some people use real ingredients fake ingredients oils whatever but this is what they was it was sell that it was sold as a curative concoction now, in a time where medicinal water and scented spirits were not distinguished, they were almost one and the same, Florida water found its foothold and in tradition and in trendy demand. So it, it kind of find a happy place, a happy niche. People were buying it for its curative properties and people were buying it for its lovely smell. 
It was sold as a unisex fragrance to be enjoyed by everyone. It was a gentle alternative to ladies to carry with them in their satchel, to be lightly put in their bath so they would have that light smell. In the 19th century, it was believed that heavy scents weren't appealing, so Florida water was a light enough alternative, which, by the way, not like in the 90s, our 90s or early 2000s were where we were wearing um, skin so soft or whatever Bath and Body Works had on sale. Um, if you were in high school at the time or middle school, you know Japanese cherry blossom or cotton blossom was the jam. My personal favorite was Japanese cherry blossom, and it kind of still is. Don't judge. Now, with so many things that Florida Water claimed to do, with the years came the skepticism, right? With advancements in science, with access to higher learning, which led to the manufacturer to kind of cut back on some of its claims. And, you know, when was it? In the 60s or 70s when they said that smoking helped you lose weight there was no regulation to this so as people were like this is this is bs they cut back on their claim and then just said well it still smells nice plus with the rise in prices for actual authentic oils for higher end perfumes florida water still kept its foothold as a light cologne at an affordable price now, and of course, since these two genius men were like, hey, we can just bottle this, have people recognize the bottle and just sell it, they they were onto something. They were very smart marketers, very smart. So why the name Florida Water? Why not just call it orange water or herbal water or whatever? Now, this one was actually really easy for me because as a Floridian and Miami native, I heard the story a billion times. We did reports on it. I feel like it was just my entire elementary school years. So when Ponce de Leon landed in Florida as, as part of the first known European exhibition, supposedly he was on a quest to discover the Fountain of Youth. Now, landing in Florida in 1513, he obviously never found it because I am quickly aging and my hair is falling out and turning white. But he did manage to colonize and decimate the native population, including the Tainos in the Caribbean. We are not a fan. So Florida, he named Florida, Florida, meaning an abounding, abounding in flowers or very flowery, became synonymous for the fountain of youth. The world became obsessed with the idea of the fountain of youth and keeping young and beautiful. So Florida water just made sense to be named Florida water. It's going to keep you young. It's going to keep you fresh. It's going to help you with all these things. Today, Florida water or the, the commercial Florida water that is being sold is used, is commonly used in spell work and ritual work, especially in a lot of close practices. Now, these are practitioners who believe that it can remove negative energies from self and from the home. It's commonly used as a floor wash to cleanse the home of negative energies um, it's known to be used as a crystal cleansing solution, which, by the way, I don't recommend since it does contain high levels of rubbing alcohol and water, and some stones just don't do well generally. And why are you sticking your crystals in alcohol? It's used in sacred spaces like altars. It's used to clean those sacred spaces. It's used in work like divination, initiation, and the like. It's used in blessings. You name it, and Florida water is probably there. So you're probably wondering, where was the jump from cologne to spiritual work? What, what are we missing? What did we do? So I honestly think this was an amalgamation of several factors that kind of just joined together to make the perfect platform for this bottle. Now you have to go back a little bit in history further back to some of these practices to fully understand. To start, Latin and Caribbean based practices use whatever they have handy and available. Of course, this is not exclusive to us, but I'm speaking from a historical and personal experience. For example, Vicks Vapor Rub, which we so lovingly call Viva Peru. It sounds like Viva Peru, but it's Viva Peru. 
And yes, it is that little blue bottle with the green or mint green top that is in your bathroom. That's probably about seven years old because you only use a little bit at a time. This commercial product was and is often used to replace elements such as pure camphor and eucalyptus oil when doing ritual work. Now you have to think in places where many Africans, Caribbeans, and Latin people have been displaced and are away from home where access to such items would be readily available, we make do with what we have. And as we see our great-grandparents, grandparents, and parents usually use it in ritual work and things like that, it slowly becomes our norm. And we think, well, this is what they use, so this has to be the way. Now that we have more access to items, now that we can just go out and buy things, we're still with the items that our parents and our grandparents used. And by the way, when I say that Viva Poru Fix Vapor Rub was everywhere, we use it everywhere and on everything. You got a cold? Viva Poru. A headache? Viva Poru. Boyfriend broke up with you? Viva Poru. Need to release some negative energies? Viva Poru. I guarantee you, your mom already has it and she's ready for it. If you're Latino, you call your mom and be like, I have a headache. Mira, ponte viva puro on the on la cabecita and you'll be fine. So just put some Vicks Vapor Rub on your temples and you'll be fine. So like Vicks Vapor Rub is being used in place of pure camphor or eucalyptus oil. Florida water is being used in place of waters that were commonly created by the healer, the energy worker, the shaman, or the practitioners. These waters that were typically created by the practitioner at home are just being basically, are basically being outsourced to a ready-made product. Instead of sitting there and watching your herbs and your peels steep for 40 minutes, you have this thing that you feel is the equivalent and is good enough to go. So, that is why it is part of a lot of these practices and why so many people are seeing it and so many of the i'm just going to say the younger generation my generation even are claiming no this is ours we're only allowed to use it not knowing the history it's just seeing somebody in their families or in their uh practice use it as part of their their ritual so what are the herbs and oils that are used in a Florida water. Again, the commercial Florida water, the one that we see in the store, the one that you go on Amazon and you type in Florida water, you're going to see. The commercial products list its ingredients as the following. Alcohol denatured, water, fragrances, FDNC blue color number one, FDNC yellow color number five. Now, FDNC stands for food and food, drug, and cosmetics. In this case, it's food coloring. I couldn't find a specific list of what the acre of the fragrance was from the manufacturer. Um, I'm not sure if it's essential oils, natural, synthetics. I just don't know. I'm sure the combination is a proprietary blend that they don't have to share. Um, but I can't find anywhere that says, yeah, this is there's we have orange oil in here. We have lavender oil. Um, I did find on one website, though, that claimed that fragrance was a combination of lemon, orange, and lavender oil. But this website was, of course, aimed at selling um, items of the occult kind. And on another website, the listing said um, it includes bergamot, neroli, lemon, cloves, lavender, roses, and orange flowers, which sounds lovely. So... As I'm digging a little bit more, I learned that there are actually two versions of Florida water, one made in the U.S. and the other version made in Peru, and both are owned by the same company. And again, according to this website aimed at selling, it says that it's been used by South American shamans. I don't know how much access the shamans back in the... 1800s, 1700s had to Florida water, but we'll just assume that they're ta- referring to modern uh, shamans, like modern practitioners in the West. So assuming that for sure there's some sort of air- orange extract, this is a scent that dominates apparently. Why is orange so important in spiritual and ritual work? 
Well, in several different practices and beliefs, certain herbs and fruits are believed to not only protect from negative energies, but also be a part of initiation and rituals. Orange, for example, I'm talking about the fruits, is believed to bring in luck and fortune, joy, purification, and protection. In addition, the mix of this as part of a concoction for spell works makes it necessary in a lot of ritual work. In practices such as voodoo, santeria, and 21 divisions. Now, 21 divisions is often called Dominican voodoo, but a lot of Dominicans don't like it to be referred that way. So 21 divisions is what we call it. In 21 divisions, specific foods correlate with specific spirits or loas. For example, offerings of oranges are often presented to Oshun. Um, in Wiccan practices, oranges are often represent the sun or are used a lot in creativity spells and often placed on litha altars. Uh, I recommend oranges a lot for solar plexus and sacral energy. This is, again, creativity, manifestation, and fertility. So it kind of, a lot of practices all do it for this, almost for the same reason. So this fruit is very, very important. So in short, oranges throughout histories and cultures are a part of spiritual practices. Now combine that with the power of other herbs like lavender, the, it does claim to have lavender, and other herbs, and this spell work is abundant. The, the work of oranges and herbs is in a lot of stuff. Put this all in a bottle with a pretty label, trademark it, sell it, and you got Florida water. A practitioner's shortcut. Now, the questions I have been asked. Is Florida water cultural appropriation? It's not cultural appropriation any less than Vicks Vapor Rub or Dior Perfume. Is It's commonly used in practices, yes, and some close practices, yes, but it does not make it exclusive for that practice. It doesn't. Is it used in spiritual practices? Yes, but as a replacement of traditional preparations and herbs and special waters, like Vicks Vapor Rub replaces camphor or eucalyptus oil. Do I recommend using commercial Florida water for rituals or spell work? You know what? Do whatever you want. Seriously, there's no policing. And if someone is going to share their unsolicited opinion, just spray some Florida water in their eyes. I'm kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Please don't do that. Um, but seriously, do what resonates with you. If you feel called to work with this water, go for it. Know that Florida water, the commercial Florida water in the store that you can buy off Amazon or go to Walgreens and pick up, is created in a lab and then produced in a factory like any other perfume. There is no blessing along the way. There's nothing to make it magical or special. Just like a candle is just the candle until you use it with intention and bless it as part of your work. So a candle is just a candle. Holy water is just water until it is blessed. So Florida water is just a perfume until you put the intention and the blessing yourself. If you know me, I think that there is magic in doing things yourself and putting the intention and putting in the work. That's part of the process. I'm not necessarily a fan of shortcuts, but that's just me talk, make it childhood trauma. I don't know. Now you can't create your own Florida water. You don't have to support a major manufacturer that's making cologne and is all again making this big comeback because people are claiming it to be so. You can make your own and you can infuse it with your own magic and your own intentions. You can remove herbs or add herbs or flowers to whatever your needs or your usages. Follow your intuition and do what resonates with you. Blessing it as you create it makes it powerful. I guarantee it's going to be more powerful than what you're going to buy at the store. So do you want a recipe? I am going to add this recipe in my um, show notes, in the podcast notes, but I did get this recipe from a website called Spells8, S-P-E-L-L-S, 8.com. Again, I'll link them in the YouTube notes. And the recipe is four parts fresh mint, 
four parts basil, four parts rosemary, three parts rose petals fresh, three parts jasmine, fresh or dried, three parts lavender, dried, two parts lemon peel, two parts of orange peel, two parts lime peel, one part allspice berries, one part cinnamon sticks, one part cloves. Now you mix in with two cups of vodka, not rubbing alcohol, vodka. On low heat, allowing to simmer for five minutes with the dry ingredients. Then you add the rest of the ingredients and simmer for about 40 minutes. Let cool and bottle in a glass jar. It's really easy. We have access to a lot of these things and especially if you are in a place where all this is just readily accessible, go for it. Just go for it. I wanted to share real quick before I end the episode, a message that I got for Rebel Moon CO, Rebel Moon Co on Instagram. That's Rebel Moon CO. And we were talking about the actual moon and the eclipse and everything that's happening right now. And we wanted, I posted something on my stories. Please go check it out because somebody else had mentioned it. And I get really frustrated sometimes because there's so many people that are coming into their own practice and and just trying to follow their own path that get deterred by naysayers or people who don't are just beginning on their journey but are deciding to either capitalize on it or just hop on a trend. And she said, I think that the problem with the spiritual community is so many are used to having instruction since they are coming from other religious settings, so they just follow the trends. Instincts are not appreciated nearly as much as they should be. We all have our own inner compass to follow. I could not have said that better myself. I think those words, um, I, I told them I'm going to share this because it's, yes. So out of this whole episode, out of every episode I've ever done, please just follow your intuition follow your inner compass do what resonates with you if you want to buy the florida bottle water go for it if you want to make it yourself go for it i love making things myself i am a total diy gal it's my thing i love it do what works with you do what feels right not because somebody else told you you can't screw this up you can't do it wrong There's nothing that you can do that is just going to turn the entire galaxy upside down or your world upside down. Do it with love. Do it with intention. Just do it. Well, that is it for my episode today. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you being part of my own spiritual journey. I have hit 38 rotations around the sun last week. I don't even remember anymore. I am older when you're older now and it feels, it feels good. It feels like I'm kind of stepping into my own stuff and I appreciate it. I appreciate you being part of my journey and my own rotation around, around the sun. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you check me out on Instagram at remember love and make sure you sign up for the class. I want to see you there. I want to meet you guys crystal reiki certification course level one you can sign up at rememberlovehealing.com we also have a newsletter there so you're always up to date on all that's happening on my website i love you thank you and i'll see you next time